Sometimes traditional PTC cameras, they don't work for a production. They can be too large, they can be too expensive or complex to handle. The Upspot PTC cameras, they are perfect in these situations, delivering a tiny footprint and with NDI-based connectivity, they fit well into broadcast workflows. There are of course compromises, but the main point of this video is to show how you can easily integrate Upspot cameras with Skyhoy controllers, other cameras, vMix, and other switcher applications. There are three main features I want to highlight today. General manual control with Skyhoy hardware, the AI tracking mode in the cameras, and using presets and trays, which are Skyhoy specific features to create smooth automated movements. First, I want you to see how the UI of the PTC Fly looks. You may not know this product. This is the most popular, basically, Skyhoy PTC controller. It's simple in that it has a joystick, as you would expect. It has also knobs you can use to adjust parameters, and it has a limited set of buttons with nice, cool OLED displays above. And they show stuff like the name of your preset, the title of your camera, and these are configurable, you can see this button will toggle between a camera selector where we can select the Tiny 2, Upspot Tiny 2, Upspot Tail Air. And if I press this button, I'm toggling into preset mode. So for instance, now for the Tiny 2, if I then recall this preset, you'll see the camera is moving into some position, which is predefined. Now with the uh, joystick, I am able to control the cameras as well manually. So obviously right now it's not in tracking mode of any sort. I am just controlling the camera. Okay, so that's basically how the controller works. If you press the upper edge of this button, it is cycling through various options for the encoders. And you can even have multiple pages of presets go forth and back by the side. So now I've broken a unique Skahoy feature, which is the four-way buttons. This is the UI of the PTC Fly. It comes straight out of the PTC Fly, basically. And in this UI, you can see how the Upspot Tail Air and Tiny 2 are basically set up here. If I wanted to correct the spelling mistake in the title, I would just quickly do so. And by the way, the camera selector you see down here, you can also easily change the titles of the cameras there. But these are basically the settings, the IP address of the camera, if you want to control. And they are controlled with a protocol called uh, Visca. So um, that's... Basically, it's still network, but it's not NDI control. And that is how we break these parameters out here um, of the cameras. Okay, let's just save this. So in this camera selector, for instance, I am free to now change the name of these cameras to whatever I want. So if I think it's better to call this super tiny, I'll just call it super tiny. And that's what now what you see here. By the way, if I go to the preset page you showed, uh, you saw just a moment ago, I can also name the presets. So this could be um, main shot. And then as I move on to the next one, you can see now this just changed its title to that close up, or maybe we call this wide shot. I think that's a more typical explanation, but that is so quick to change. And that means people using presets, they are much better able to basically use them because they can see a short description of what they get if they press that button. Okay, so this is the UI of the camera and we can also see the output of these cameras. So let me just make this one, turn this over. So basically we have pan operation of the camera here and we also have a tilt operation. So now you can see the camera output and this is me, hello, hello, hello. And I can zoom by rotating the joystick, okay? So far so good. All right, now I wanted to show you the tracking feature. So if you look at the menu that I'm actually on right now, and once again, I'm cycling through these different options. Maybe let's just quickly take a look at that. What is this? Manual exposure, so you can go between manual and automatic. If you are in automatic exposure, it will figure out everything out itself. Otherwise, you can actually set the shutter speed of the camera to other values. You can also change the ISO. And in a sense, the ISO is the substitute for what it doesn't have. It doesn't have a lens with an actual iris you can change, but using the, the ISO, you can sort of balance and in combination with the shutter speed, the light intake of your camera. Okay, so moving on, we have white balance. We have different standard options. These are, are, are basic. Um, let's just keep it on auto, for instance. And then we have pan tilt speed. That is actually related to how quickly will this joystick move. Now at speed two, it's not very fast. 
at speed 10, it is quicker, but the small camera is not super quick anyway. So that is what it is. And now we're back at the AI movement. So if I move this or use this in code, I can choose between two things, normal and movement. These will be settings from the camera. So whatever they do, this is determined by the camera itself. We are not doing the tracking here. But if I enable the tracking, you'll see that the camera is now following me to some extent. And that, of course, can also be controlled from this controller. Let's move over to the uh, tail uh, air here. This is a super quick camera. That's um, really quick. And I can change around the input source. So now we see this camera here. OK, that's super cool and nice. Also, again, now I'm actually in the tracking menu here as well. So once again, I can do normal track. I have something called upper body. So there you see we integrated the particular camera which is available in this one and there's one called close up that is also defined by the camera. It has some settings for how fast it is going to adopt, uh, adapt to these settings, which uh, kind of focus mode that we have. It's uh, if it's auto or, or manual. If we're in manual mode, then we can use this knob to, to adjust the focus of the camera. So now I'm out of focus basically and now I can go back to normal and all is good again. What else do we have? We have the same things like manual um, exposure or full auto exposure. When things are in full auto, you'll see that these um, knobs, they, they get a little icon in the lower right corner that indicates that this parameter is not available for adjustment because we are in auto mode. And if I go back to manual now, it is available once again. I think we'll go back to auto because that looked ugly. And here again, we have some speed settings for the camera. And here we are now back at the AI mode. So it is really limited what we can set in terms of parameters for these. But we have um, uh, we have a good understanding of it right now. And now I'm basically back to the um, non AI assisted situation. So yes, these cameras are super popular for the AI adjustments they can do. But it is also uh, critical that you have manual control. And that's what we are giving you. And now I want to show you how presets work. Because with presets, I can basically snapshot this this one, which would be like a semi close up. I just did that. No. Okay. So what is this then? That would be a close up. Let's press and hold that green light. When I hold it for one second, I'm storing that position. So if I click this one, it is going to this uh, like half white and then I have a close up shot now. And as you saw a moment ago, I can go into my UI here and then I can for my tail, this guy, I can edit the table. Just call this half close. Okay. So those labels are now available here again. Now it is super nice and easy for me to use the presets because I can see what I get when I press these buttons, just like with the up spot mini two. The final thing I want to show you is how cool would it be if you could like automate a move with your up spot uh, camera. And um, that is called a trace. So let's say that I wanted to just uh, go from here and then to to a move over here. Okay, so I press and hold it for three seconds to start a recording of a trace. And it's now waiting for my first move with the joystick. All right. So now I'll just try to make a nice move over here. Okay, these cameras are probably not the best to do this. And I should probably be in auto mode, but you will understand what this means now. And you can practice your own moves yourself to have like smooth movement if even possible. And now I have recorded this trays. And if I press this button, you'll see the first thing it does is it recalls the preset of the beginning shot, the start shot of this one. And as I now press it, it is going to play back the steps that we did with the joystick to end up in the final in the final position that we had when we stopped the trace recording. So with this, you could basically train your hand on the joystick. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, I will invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on social media, subscribe to our newsletter for updates and all that good stuff. In the description below this video, you'll find links to our website and how you can get in touch with us. I hope to see you in another video.